All right, it's time now for Media Watch. And James Creedon is here with us in the studio. Hi there, James. Hi, Laura. Um, I'm going to start off uh, a lot of reaction, of course, on social media today uh, to the first day of dismantling the so-called jungle migrant camp up in that's, Calais. That's right. And a lot of headlines saying the world is kind of really looking at France today to see how the story will unfold and how it's going to be sort of depicted. Uh, Le Mans cartoonist Plantu has this particular uh, cartoon for us today. Bye bye, Calais. And you can see uh, the state, I suppose, bulldozing um, the, 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 the migrants out of Calais with a bus there because, of course, they were bussed to various different parts of the mm. country with uh, welcome to France on the side of it. So that's ironic. And I suppose that that's the fear that it could be depicted in the way that Plantu is depicting it as something very uh, inhumane. Uh, this is kind of ironic because one of the buses it is actually being used to, uh, sh uh, to not to ship, but to boss, I suppose, the migrants uh, has this slogan on the side of it. It's just from a private company and it says, Au bout de vos rêves, oh. or, uh, you know, fulfilling your dreams. And I suppose uh, that is not necessarily the case for a lot of the people who will be on those buses. Another um, image that has uh, uh, circulated a lot on social media is this map that was presented to uh, the various uh, residents of the camp, giving them a choice between two different regions. And uh, so they had to pick basically from this map where they were going to end up and uh, various journalists uh, picking up on that. Perhaps this is some French geography there. Exactly. Uh, Angelique uh, Christophis for <laughs> The Guardian pointing to this board game or photographing this court board game uh, that some asylum seekers had. And I suppose that's very illustrative of where they wanted to end up over the opposite side of the uh, of the channel. Um, but that's not where they're going for a lot of them. And uh, so this sympathetic tweet saying, just for a moment, feel the pain of your home being in a bag, moving continuously, no security constant fear just heartbreaking so there were quite a few comments like that on social media people expressing sympathy for uh, the li the lives that these people are living a lot of people are sympathetic some people though are not that's right and indeed in some of the regions where uh, camps uh, are being set up or have been set up to welcome or maybe that's not the right word uh, some of these migrants you you do have opposition and this is an article in Le Journal du Dimanche cataloguing some of that opposition in one town near Grenoble they even wanted to have a referendum for the 2500 residents of Alex oh, but Bézier, is it? I, I, I'm not sure it was Bézier it was another another place but another in, town, right. in another case it was overruled by a local court but there were a lot of towns expressing opposition even uh, the deputy leader of Les Républicains Laurent Vauquier, he famously said uh, in, in last month that he did not want any migrants coming to his uh, region uh, in, uh, I think he's in Auvergne, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but then Sudwest, which is a, a local newspaper in the southwest, pointing to a, a record levels of funds having been raised uh, for, in anticipation of migrants arriving in the Cognac area. So it's clearly not a black or white picture. People still do tend to have very different reactions to all of this. It's very divergent. Uh, you do have a certain amount of scaremongering then going on on social media images such as this during the rounds depicting migrants sort of uh, in hordes uh, heading across the French countryside and BuzzFeed pointing out that there's a lot of fake images during the rounds of social media today. People uh, picking <laughs> images that are in no way depicting uh, the events that are happening today and uh, just sort of sharing it in, in a scaremongering style. Now, one final angle on the story is from Le Ton in Switzerland. They are talking about the spectacle or the sort of um, circus, the media circus in particular, surrounding the whole Calais uh, story. And indeed, uh, one uh, journalist here pointing to the fact that 520 journalists have been accredited. Now, of course, it is a big story with a lot of stakes and it is symbolic of a lot of different uh, um, I suppose issues right There's now. There's as many journalists as there are migrants. But that's it. And I suppose there is a question then of how it's being covered. Is it is it sort of being covered sensitively or is it being covered in a in a sort of a uh, sensationalist manner? And uh, some are tweeting uh, uh, messages of warning journalists to kind of deal with the story in a responsible uh, manner and not to kind of, you know, just reduce it to uh, infotainment, I suppose. All right. Now, uh, one of the things you should know um, if you come to live in France is... How much it costs to buy a pan of chocolat? That's right. There's tasty delicacies in every French boulangerie. That's right. That's right. Up and right. down the country. It costs a lot more than 15 centimes, doesn't it? It definitely does. Now, Jean-Francois Coppé, who is a, a presidential hopeful <laughs> on the political right, there he is uh, with the pan of chocolat floating around his face. Uh, <laughs> he w answered a question on radio this morning. Uh, it, it was one of these trick questions. You know, how, how in touch are you with the public, with real life, etc.? Now, they, they cost well over a euro, probably two euros, even more in some places, depending on how chic your boulangerie is. I'd say one, one euro fifty. Or something around that. You're definitely closer, I think, uh, to the reality <laughs> than Jean-Francois Coppé, who said, oh, 10, 15 cents. 
In any case, uh, this is a quiz ask that has been set up by the lab. Ten thing. or fifteen. I mean, <laughs> even in the seventies, I don't think they were. Probably that, not. Actually. Well, it, it was francs back then. Maybe it was. Maybe it was a fifteen. I don't know what what, what it cost. But the lab has helpfully set up a quiz, uh, so you can figure out how if you are this as is the disconnected. Of the, the pint. I don't know what, what what do you have in Ireland in the UK. They usually have a pint of milk. They the kind of emblematic. How much is a pint of milk? Right. And indeed, there was an incident last year where uh, I think it was uh, Nathalie Kosciusko Morizé massively got the price of a metro ticket wrong. And this that's was, right. Yeah, this was right, when yeah. she was. Where, where is it? Yeah, there it is. Uh, when when she was hoping to be the mayor of Paris. So that obviously made her look very disconnected as well. In any case, uh, this is a crowd of people waiting outside Jean-François Copé's boulangerie to uh, buy their fifteen cent. Uh, Pan of chocolat, that's not real. <laughs> and others uh, c- commenting on social media saying, I want him as my baker, not as my president. Uh, what else do we have? He actually responded on Twitter saying, look, you know, I'm actually trying to keep an eye on my weight. I haven't been buying pan of chocolat you get a carrot in a while. <laughs> so he's trying to make out that he just eats fruit and veg and that's why he doesn't know the price of uh, the pan of chocolat. Oh, anyway, oh, he has yeah. been de- depicted as completely cut off because of this uh, Issue here he is, Copé uh, Mon Go, distributing his phantom 15 cent uh, <laughs> pan of chocolat. And here he is in, in La La Land, or Le Pays de Bisounours, as the French say. In any case, uh, there's a bit of context to the story because he was plagued by pan au chocolat in the past. Yep. Back in 2012, there was a political storm over uh, Jean-François Copé uh, using the pan au chocolat as a symbol of uh, how French children sometimes are having trouble with around the time of Ramadan. Basically, he had some story, whether it happened or not, who knows. Yeah, that was a head-scratcher then, and it... Was it remains a head-scratcher now. He was saying people have... <laughs> pan of chocolate, children have pan, pan of chocolate whipped out of their hands during Ramadan, Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, when, obviously, Muslims are fasting. In any case, he got uh, he got lambasted for that on social media, and... The and cur- he's getting lambasted against the it. The curse of the pan of chocolate is back. It's just some things you're... Your PRs just can't pay for, <laughs> <are they? laughs> Definitely right. not. James, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Indeed, James Creedon with Media Watch.